Musical Talk, the UK independent musical theatre podcast. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Musical Talk. My name is Nick Hudson. Presenting with Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Finally finished breaking my equipment. I haven't broken anything yet. <laughs> you just tried to move the microphone and it sounded like my me when I stand up. It's not my fault that you need to get some WD-40 on this. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, See? Well, we apologise to <laughs> headphone users out there. Um, a very, very special episode of Musical Talk coming up this week. It's a double... Um, it's a double feature, you could say. We're going to be discussing Hello Dolly, which you and I saw uh, at the London Palladium just the kind of almost two days before it opened. Yeah, last night of previews, wasn't it? I think so. I think that was when we Something saw like it. That. And we're also going to be previewing the new musical from Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss, writers of Six, called Why... Am I so single? So why am I so single? Yeah, and there you go. Um, and t- only today I was invited to an open rehearsal, and we got we've got some interviews from there and some song previews. So we're just going to end the episode with that, so you can kind of feel like you're there. So we're going to discuss um, Hello Dolly first mm-hmm. of all. Very embarrassed to admit, I've never seen a production of Hello Dolly. Well, neither had I, so that's why... Have you been doing a musical theatre podcast for 20 years? No, I haven't. However, I think it was really nice because usually when it comes to musicals, it's, you know, you sit there and you go, yeah, I've seen it, seen it, yeah, seen it, I've seen that 20 times, seen it, seen it, seen it. And I'm like, okay, well, all of this is new to me, um, so can I just enjoy it? Whereas this one, we were both able to go into it knowing very little, and it was just a nice shared experience from that point of view. Of course, everyone knows the title song, Hello Dolly, made famous mm-hmm. by Louis Armstrong. And there's been films and previous productions, many, many productions. And uh, eagle fans, eagle fans, eager. Eagle-eyed fans, eager fans. Eagle-eyed and eager fans <laughs> of musical talk will know that we had uh, many, 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 many years ago, Jerry Herman, the composer and lyricist of Hello Dolly and many other musicals on the podcast. Um, Could you have said that any quicker? Probably. But I'm not going to. <laughs> so, but we never really had a massive production of it here, and nothing says big production more than the London Palladium. And I wanted to, I wanted you to see a show like this at the Palladium. I wanted that to be your first yeah, so experience, this is my first Palladium experience. And oh my goodness, it did not disappoint. I'm really glad that my first introduction to the Palladium was something like this, rather than the Panto. Yeah, or a concert or something. Yeah, I mean a concert or something. Fine, but. Yeah, when it comes to an actual show show, the the Pantos, the Palladium Pantos are renowned for being over the top and extra and yeah. everything. And I feel like if you go to one of those and you don't get that, then they, they've missed the mark. Whereas, <clears throat> excuse me, just seeing an ordinary, quote, quote, ordinary show, but... A book musical. Yeah, a book musical, but at the Palladium to see what they can do. Oh my goodness. Mm. Unbelievable. Loved it. And this this production, if you don't know, stars uh, Imelda Staunton, National Treasure. Oh, she was so, so good. But we... I love her. The thing is, you and I are going in blind, not really having seen the Barbara Streisand film mm-hmm. or the uh, Bet, um, Bette Midler do it or Ethel Merman or... Um, I know, saw Craig Rover Hall do it on Strictly. Does that count? No. Um but he was or, in drag or even Danny LaRue did it and mm. he, he was a famous drag performer who did the UK tour about 50 mm-hmm. years ago dreadfully and um, how do you know it was dreadfully if you haven't seen it I've seen footage on YouTube oh, okay fair and didn't play it for very long but um, Imelda has got a bit of criticism because she's doing this thing where she kind of it's all taken a bit too seriously. And there's this kind of feeling that Hello Dolly is meant to be... She's not meant to be sad. She's meant to be this really happy character. I, I thought she was quite a happy character in those mm. moments then when it but was... But she's meant to be so over the top and it's meant to be no moroseness at all. But it makes it more realistic. Yeah. 
But is this a realistic... Because whenever you see somebody that's over the top happy all the time, you're like, oh, they're a manic depressive. Right. So I feel like by having that balance, it made Dolly a lot more relatable. Someone said that she's treating it as a play and not a musical. Which I think worked, personally. But this is a great big American cheesy show tune but i thought i still feel we got that piece. i still feel we got that we did that's just what some people said i thought she was excellent i uh, got to give special credit also to andy nyman he was really good um who played i can't wait well, i can't it's been a while since we've seen this listeners i think um horace was that his name yes the kind of elderly love interest is it of um of, Dol- of no, Dolly. Oh, yeah. I wish programmes were better laid out because they don't really give a cast list. They don't really... This certainly has no um, pictures from the show in it. We just got rehearsal pictures, but they might have... Um, we did a cast this, I apologise. Um, we just have like rehearsal pictures and a load of adverts for £10. So, But then again, if we've seen it on the last night of previews, you're yeah. not necessarily going to get... No, they might the reprint programs do you think for the length of the run i would have thought yeah. not because it's until what sep- september september yeah. so imelda staunton plays dolly levi and andy nyman plays horace van der Gelder, and jenna russell um also a wonderful star plays irene malloy and a huge cast oh you know. it was so nice to see a full stage mm. so good i loved it what did you love about the piece specifically, if you can remember? I love the choreography. Yeah. I thought it was very balletic. By Bill Deemer. Yeah, it was really nice. Beautiful, beautiful group choreography. Really lovely. Um, love the costume design. Hello. Shout out to the costume de- department on this one because, oh my goodness, those dresses, especially like the evening dresses where they went out for the meal and Dolly's obvious like entrance dress. Mm. Hello! <laughs> Hello, Dolly! She's living her brat summer, isn't oh, she? Oh, God, let's not get started on that. But I just thought, oh, the elegance, the the over-the-top, oh, I just loved it. I loved it so much. It was also a, a much funnier piece than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Um, and, and as we talked about last week, had more trains in it than Star Art Express. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my ticket price there, done when the train came on and the cable was cars and things. It was, it was just wonderful. I know there was a bit where you, were, when we first got in and you said, oh, here we go, projectors. Ugh. Yeah. But I have to say, the use of them was, and the screens that they did have, was absolutely excellent. Mm. And shout out to the fact that they had practical sets. They did have practical scenery. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Which is excellent. It's a dying art form. And... Um, and also a band, an orchestra, dare I say, not a band, an orchestra of 21, mm. which is so nice to have nowadays. I feel as well that the, so something we said about with like Wicked and stuff was, it's almost like, I know that we saw Wicked on a very quiet night because Eurovision was on, but I feel like the show didn't match the space it was in, whereas I felt like, oh, hello, Dolly, like this book musical at the Palladium, but it, it worked well. Like I feel like it suited the space. It was sold out. Yep. It was a it was a full house that evening. It was a Tuesday night or something. Random, yeah, wasn't something it? really random, and yeah, it was sold out. And the piece matched the size of the environment. If that makes any sense to anyone, rather than having like a little show in a huge environment where it falls a bit flat, it was oh, it was excellent, absolutely excellent. Does it make you want to watch the film with? Yeah. Um, Barbara Streisand and a very young Michael Crawford as well, who plays the young love in the, the kind of, you know, the what two comedy. So Michael Crawford is, was the original Phantom and in that's Phantom why, of the Opera. Uh, there we go. Some Mothers Do Have Him, um, sitcom, Ask Your Parents. Um, and just a kind of a British actor mm. that somehow. No, I know I recognise the name from like musicalness. And that would be why. Um, yeah. The songs, I think, are very charming. They're very of their time. There's a weird kind of Frankenstein version we're getting of the show now, which is because of the film. They've put some of those songs in. Mm. For example, the opening number of her standing in the apartment, that was added from the film, I believe. But I'm not the biggest expert on this show, so I'm not entirely 100% correct. But it just it's interesting how 
popular this show is, they're still, you know, making changes to it after all this time. Yeah. It's a show that, especially this version of it, I would go and see it again before it closes. I really enjoyed it a mm. lot more than I thought I would. Because I, I what said, did you think it was going to be? I don't know. I said to you before it started, like, oh, God, some sort of old-timey music. Here we go. And, I, and why is that bad? I don't know. I just think for me... Did this open your eyes to traditional musical comedies? Maybe. Maybe it's because I don't have a lot of experience in them. I didn't realise it was going to be as funny as it was, like especially with the bit in the hat shop. Mm. That was... I've, I thought that was quite funny. Millinery. Min- millinery. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really nice. I thought, like I said to you when we walked out of it as well, that I ju- it was just a genuinely nice show. Mm. It wasn't overly dramatic it wasn't overly complicated there was no villain no there was no villain it was just you knew what was going to happen as she was setting mm. it up in well, the what, 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 so she's a matchmaker and it's based on a play called the matchmaker mm-hmm. um i believe and it's like she who's she going to end up with that's the kind of i think i feel like it's obvious from yeah. from the start but what i wasn't expecting was her kind of men suck kind of song which she yeah i mean fair play to her did uh and just a reminder what that song is called whilst i flip through the program it might be from the stage show it might be from the film i don't know but it's called so long deary mm. i think uh is it called that um yes because it's just before the end but then i feel like you needed it because they had the whole number in the beginning about how where a woman a woman's place is a woman. yeah. yeah and so i feel like it needed that and especially from her perspective to be like hang on a minute just to balance everything out because and, and you 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 kind of do wonder this how groundbreaking that probably was in the 60s at this time yeah. of big female you know with the um the suffrage not the suffragette but the kind of the the second feminist movement mm. that they had um so probably a piece very of its time which is excellent but yet it still stands up today yeah which I think is something that we're not... I don't mean this like across the board, but we not may not necessarily get with some musicals of today. I feel like some of them are like, oh, yeah, let's have a quick flash in the pan kind of, yeah, we've got our success and move on. Like, mm. I feel like at some points it's not necessarily thought about like the longevity. And I get it. When you write a piece or when you do something, you're not necessarily thinking, well, how's this going to stand up in, in 20 years, years yeah. or 50 years or 60 years? But... It, I feel like something like this just goes to show that it can, mm. as long as the the concept of it is something that's relatable now and in in fifty years time. You know, it's a, it's an idea of. I mean, obviously, it starts with she's lost lost her husband. That's going to apply to a fair amount of people that were probably in that auditorium, mm. and you know, or if not your husband, you've lost someone close to you, and it's about like these characters that have these things that anyone can can feel whereas and i think finding love at a certain age is often seen as quite difficult so mm. if she's doing it for other people and i feel like especially musicals that are latching onto certain ips as well you look at things like the spongebob musical yeah that's great for people of a certain age great for little ones great for people like me for a nostalgia point of view how's that gonna live up in 50 years mm. probably not find out apparently it was a bit of a masterpiece I don't i'm know. gutted i missed it to be honest with you i'm really gutted i missed it um this show has, is known for a couple of moments the the, the waiters gallop halfway through act two oh. in the um in the the, the kind of the, the posh restaurant they go to iconic um and also the title song hello yeah. dolly when she comes down the staircase apparently if you were sitting right on the edge of the theater you could see her walk up the kind of backstage stairs to get onto the staircase oh, really? which is a bit of a design flaw i find but um i kind of love that though that dress i still can't get over it that dress and then the, the finale dress she had that red yeah. one. Oh my god but a second she wore it for the bells yeah and then and that, that was it and oh it. and it was so detailed as well um costume outdid themselves on this one and like her performance in gypsy um hello dolly the song 
got a standing ovation, mm-hmm. which was amazing to see. I think one of those mid-show standing ovations. Imelda Staunton is wonderful. Some people don't like her. I was going to say, some I think pe- she's fabulous. When it comes to her singing, I know that some people have their own opinion. Obviously, everybody's got their own opinion, but some people feel like she's not very suited to musicals as someone that is well versed in musicals and music themselves what were your thoughts on her vocal performance i think she hits the notes um i think she's working very very hard i Mm -hmm. mean she she's an absolute um kind of i don't say horse but she is a kind of she's a powerhouse she's a powerhouse she just never never takes a day off um she's just excellent and she might not give the same brassy performance that ethel merman or bernadette peter uh, not uh, well, bernadette peter <laughs> has done the part bet midler's done the part uh carol channing very famously has mm. done the part um <sighs> yes i know how you know carol channing um when well, specifically hello dolly <laughs> Sky Movie 2 fans will know where Hannah's going with this. No, that was my main introduction to the show of Hello Dolly was at the start of Scary Movie 2, Cameron Channing ran that piano singing it. Brilliant. So so she doesn't give that level of performance, but she delivers it and Mm -hmm. the audience loved it and you can't ask... More than that. You know, um, you can't ask for anything more. And it had a train. And it had a train. How did you feel? Because I know you said after the show that you didn't expect her outburst. Yeah. And How- as I said earlier, I was happy they put kind of her angry song, which is nice because it kind of modernises the piece a bit. Um, not as good as her outburst in Gypsy. Certainly not as scary as her performance as Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd when mm. she was in that with Michael Ball, which was incredible. It's just, I feel so lucky every time... I see her. Yeah. Because she's really we don't really have big stars in this country and she's not a, she's not up there with Elaine Stritch or Bernadette Peters or etc. But she's kind of our version and she's probably a better actress yeah. than them, I would think. She's no more as a, a screen girl mm. rather than stage. And how did it feel for you as a fan of her from, you know, what she's probably most famous for nowadays is Harry Potter. Mm. She's also a Nanny McPhee. And the Queen. The Queen. I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen that. But, yeah, I mean, obviously growing up this day and age, she was a massive part of my childhood, you know. She's not going anywhere either. As, no, as Dolores she's, Umbridge. no, she is not. Thank you, Universal. And and <clears throat> the pink dress. Oh, my God, I thought that was so funny. And a costume. If In this, the court. If this was an intentional choice or not but putting Amelda Staunton in pink oh, I, I reckon it's in a, just in, in, the, in, a court. in a courtroom as well I was literally like oh my gosh and bearing in mind a lot of people on this on this show probably don't know about the ride that's going yeah. into Universal with Amelda as Umbridge in, in a courtroom but I just thought with that recent announcement and then her in a courtroom in a pink dress. I love that. It's kind that. of a fun thing you could imagine her requesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, give me all the pink. Especially because in the in the Harry Potter films, as Umbridge gets more power, her costumes get darker okay. in colour. So they start off very light pink, and then the more powerful she gets, the darker the pink is. Um, and I did like how she started out in like a... I'm sure she started out in a lighter pink outfit, and then she ended up in the darker pink, and then she ended up in a red dress at the end. I was like, oh my goodness. Is this just echoing that? Was that an intentional choice, or was that just them going, hey, this would look. This is a nice colour on you. This is of the time and of yeah. the era. Where, where was that? In this. Yeah. Um, I think we've got to give credit to um, the actress Emily Lane, who plays Minnie Faye. I'm correct me if I'm wrong. I think she's a character that does nothing apart from cry. Oh my god, she was so good. I was like, oh, she's me. That character is me. She just stands there and cries, whacks out a bit of choreography, and goes back to crying with a man by her side. I'm like, this is just me. <laughs> But she does it very well, and, and people might think, oh, it's such an easy thing to do. It's not. Not I to make it convincing. Not. And get laughs. Yeah. And, it could know. have been one of those things that's so easily like, oh my God, what a whiny cow. Can you just stop? But it's done in a convincing and funny way. So, so that's Hella Dolly at the London Palladium. Our thoughts 
If you haven't seen it, go and see it. If you have seen it, go and see it again. Yeah, please do because it it blow, it's blown my mind. I love it. It's one of those Good. shows that I wish was around for a little bit longer. I'm sure there'll be an album. Probably. There are many albums of the show that you can listen to. I mean, it's it's spawned all sorts of jazz standards and things. Mm. And um, the songs are <clears throat> very, very catchy, especially put on your Sunday clothes and da da da. Yeah. And, um, you know. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly in the parade. And I it, wasn't expecting the parade. I quite yeah. like that. Yeah. It's just, it's just a. You know, no one wrote show tunes like Jerry Herman, traditional kind yeah. of... Yeah, that's the thing is, it, it just felt like pure musical theatre yeah. and I just came out of it, it was feel good. Mm. It was feel good. I was like, do you know what, like we said, there was no villain, there was nothing crazy going on. Would you say nice... Horace was a villain though? No. Okay. Why? Well, he has his kind of, his introductory moment isn't in the best light is but it he's a that, businessman yeah you work with anybody that owns their own business that is responsible for that business and trying to make money mm. the business comes first then it's family i i must admit i was a bit befuddled at some of the plot moments but i'm befuddled by most plot points anyway because i just you are so honed in on yeah but this isn't logical this isn't this yeah. this isn't, and i'm like at the end of the day mate it's musical. What did you it's think a story. of the just gloss over it? Addressing the audience moments. The addressing the audience moments. Oh, the start of Act Two. Well, there were times when they just turned to the audience. Oh and... yeah, I said to you, didn't I, that I thought it was a bit weird, but I quite liked it because again, it, it was like you said, it was probably just like a quirk of the time, mm. and it's nice to see that sort of thing that isn't necessarily. I feel like so many shows nowadays are like, let's be immersive and let's transport people and let's do this and let's... Naturalistic. And yeah, this. where and it kind of just feels like I've just spent 70, 80 plus, 100 plus quid on coming to see something that it just feels like if it was streamed, like say Hamilton, mm. for example, you could watch that at home on Disney+. Plus. You know, going to see the show, yes, you still get the consistency and the quality of, of what you see on screen, on, but you're just watching it on stage. Whereas seeing something like that with Hello Dolly, it was like, oh, actually being an audience member here, I'm feeling like... Part of it. Part of it and by being immersive. addressed, but it's not immersive. Thank God, God. Hello Dolly, the immersive production on a train. Oh, the immersive <laughs> Wonderful. experience. Um yeah, so that's that. Let's move on to a completely different um, kettle of fish entirely, which is the uh, musical we mentioned earlier, Why Am I So Single, by uh, six writers, um, Katie Marlowe and Toby Ross. So um, what did you think? Sorry, Lucy Moss and Toby Marlowe. Sorry, I'm very tired. It's been a very long day. Um this is a a new musical that we were invited to this afternoon to witness a kind of little preview of two and a half songs, which you're going to hear. You're going to hear some interviews, an interview with the main cast members and the writers themselves. Um, and I'll share my thoughts, what little thoughts I have on the piece after that. So sit back, make a cup of tea and uh, enjoy. some numbers with you that we've been rehearsing it's all very fresh still work in progress and including some exclusive uh, stuff which we haven't shown anybody before outside of this room it's very exciting yeah, very good. Um, yeah. And, um, and we didn't want to do too many like spoilers of the show but to tell you just a little bit about what it is um the show is a, a big musical uh, about two friends who spend the evening on a sofa <laughs> Um, trying to figure out once and for all why they are in fact so very single and meanwhile um, they are also putting off writing a big fancy musical that they are meant to be writing. Which is... um, yeah, so uh, the first number we're going to show you is the opening number um, of the show. Um, we're going to have a little sing through with our amazing company in a second. Um, but to give you a bit of context basically, uh, one of the characters has come around to the other's house basically after a bad date to debrief on what the situation was and that's where we find these characters. Okay, so I'm watching this guy on Hinge, we start chatting and suddenly I'm like, oh shit, I recognise that company name, that's where the ex were 
ones who were missing it out. I'll be burned, the one and only. Reasons we're desperate, little only. Oh, how could you be so wrong? If we didn't see what's between us to both of us now. Can't believe we didn't see the sign. Can't believe so plain to see.
Even just like, I think even just being like grateful for the people you have around you. Mm -hmm. Sitting in the day when that, the romanticness isn't there, the person you call are those, you know, everyone has that, maybe that person that they call and they tell everything to. And I think it would be nice to go away and, you know, for people to just say, you know, yeah. I love you. I love you. Um, I love you and yeah. I'm thankful for you. Yeah. And I think that is, you know what I mean? I always say that when we ask this question, it was, I always say to quote the writers because Toby and Lucy said it right at the beginning and it stuck with me that we hope, it's like we hope people leave and text someone they love and tell them they love them. Absolutely. And yeah. I just think that that runs through the whole thing it's, mm. um, and that is it's just so important. Yeah. I also hope their belly laugh. Like, yeah. I hope yeah. like, yeah. yeah. their belly hurts yeah. they laugh so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's joy is what a massive so thing. I hope mm. they feel in their day if they maybe haven't felt any joy in that day particularly or haven't felt as much as they wanted to that they come to the theatre and they get the joy that they need out of this show because I think that's what at the end of it with all of the emotional side of it as well it is pure joy yeah. um, mm, which is yeah. really important right now as well yeah. and I agree silliness. I agree yeah. <laughs> I didn't say anything so I agree <laughs> and also like platonic love is like you know your siblings yeah. your like it, do, it isn't just a friend you know platonic love is everything yeah. Yeah. and I think that is and then from Operation Live Theatre how does it feel to be in a brand new musical and have a chance to debut a new show Ooh, go on <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really exciting <laughs> It's really scary. Yeah. It's really 
I feel like every day we come in the room and we're sort of like surprised by what we're discovering, what we're making, how tired we are. It's all very, it's, yeah, there's lots of amazing discovery going on. And it's, I think putting on anything new is a task. Putting on a musical in, in general is a task. Putting on a new musical is another big task. And putting on a new musical that's going straight to the West End is another big task. You know what I mean? It's just like... So a small amount of tasks. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a to-do list. It's a really long to-do But I think we as a collective are all really looking after each other mm -hmm. so we can all do the very best work and yeah i don't think i've ever felt so safe in a rehearsal mm -hmm. oh my god it's so lovely it's like a it warm yeah. ball of fuzz F just like it's a like, hug you wake up you wake up every day and i'm actually <laughs> excited, excited to come yeah. here Buzzing. as exhausted as we are because yeah. we're working our asses off yeah. i'm so excited to come to work every day so, yeah. that's, that's um i think that's created from like the like obviously it's scary and a lot of pressure to, to debut this material, especially with it being by Toby and Lucy, there's so much pressure on that. But the reason why it's so warm and safe is because they give us so much license to play with what mm -hmm. they've written. And yeah. so like, as much as it is like, we have to put this across in a certain way, that they are allowing so much of us to bring ourselves as well. So like, that's why it feels so. And there feels like a certain level, there's, I've never experienced working with a director who also is the writer, so you're getting almost a double brain. It's so, it's yeah. such a strange experience, but it's so helpful because yeah. if you're ever feeling unsure, or if you ever feel stuck, Lucy can go, well, I wrote it and this is what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it really yeah, helps true. to bridge the gap, but also they're not, what I think is also lovely about creating this new process is neither Toby, Lucy, Ellen, Joe, any of the team are like precious about it. If something isn't working or doesn't feel right, yeah. they are more than happy to go, well, why don't we try something, you know, everyone is so open and that's actually mm -hmm. a yeah. blessing in disguise because it's not always like that, you know, sometimes yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of restrictive. Okay. Okay. And then um, from Adventures in Fishland, as this is a new musical and your originating roles, how have you found the process of developing your own characters? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great, yeah. Um, um, what was the question again, sorry? Developing new characters, how originating role. Character. Yeah. How, does that, how does it feel? Well, it feels great, yeah. yeah. It feels lovely. <laughs> Just to, to be able to put like, your own stamp on something, I think that is mm. like, yeah. you know, it doesn't happen very often, so to be able to get that opportunity is like, yeah. it's... I feel like an actor's dream almost, you know what I mean? And I think there's sometimes a confusion with sort of creating roles and being the first person to do something where it feels like you're sort of creating a groundwork for, for other people in the future, which is actually not the case. You're creating something that comes from you yeah. and that's what makes it special is that everyone in the room is such an individual. Yeah. So the role wouldn't work without that person's energy and essence and what they bring. And mm -hmm. then if it happens, you know, like, in a year's time when there's another cast then they'll bring their energy yeah, and their essence yeah. like that's the groundwork that's been laid here so yeah you're not sort of having to think about oh well what would this other person do you do it's all coming from us which is very unique special as well as there's like footprints of all of us on the show yeah. Yeah. Like you can watch the show and be like oh i remember i suggested that or i remember i did that yeah, bit and or i remember that came from me like falling on the floor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it'll be come from a state, come from suggestion, like there's footprints and like handprints of all of us all over the show, which is like the most amazing thing, because when you, when we, if it gets passed on and when it carries on for many, many years, it's so <laughs> um, it will be able to watch that kind of progress, which is amazing. And even, even now, like, even, like, not talking about future casts, even with us, with like alternates and swings going on, like yeah. even they bring something completely different yeah. to each yeah. role. They're not, they're not like you're not stepping into a character. It's like 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 with like say Elphaba, like yeah. it's, it's a completely if you watch a different person in a leading yes. role or in the ensemble, it's completely different. When a swings on, they play Absolutely. it differently, and the alternates are the same. So yeah. it's really cool. And I don't feel like that's just that's always the case with new musicals. That's it feels very unique to what we're doing here. Yeah. That they want us to bring ourselves every yeah. time we come in to, you know, step into a cover role or something. It's like, what do you bring Tash to this? Mm. And yeah, it just really isn't always the way. So I, I love it's when, incredible. I love when we bring Brandon and bring a swing song. Yeah. 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 And then from what's on stage, do you any of you personally relate to the characters or events? Absolutely not, it's really unrelatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, I have to speak as well, like, my experience doing this show for the workshop last year, not to be too, like, 
cheesy, but it changed my life. Yeah. Um, I like wasn't fluid with my gender before then. I had only just started to experience that. So like seeing the character of Oliver, like experiencing those things, yeah. I was able to be like, oh my gosh, that's something that makes my heart feel, um, yeah. makes my heart yeah. feel really happy. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's an amazing thing to experience. So like in, there is so much relatability, but that's a very specific thing. So like, if we, if, we, if we have the specificities of what I'm feeling towards the character, I know that there's gonna be so much more relatability in it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if there's so much specific that I can relate to, there will be something vast for all of you to relate to in some yeah. way, which I think is really beautiful. Feeling seen is the best feeling oh in God. the world. And so I hope that just everyone like, feels like even that. Even like the whole, premise of like there are so many like different themes throughout the show yeah. and I feel like everyone can relate to something in some way because yeah. at the end of the day you know if you you know ex if you experience something it's worth being shared yeah. Yeah. and I think there is so much of that in the show um, and I think the show does that doesn't it with it touches on everything um, um, and then this question kind of ties into that so what aspect of the performance is like really essential for that believability in the show? Um, so particularly because it's going to mirror a lot of people's dating lives, like mm -hmm. or personal lives. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's quite candid, really. I think because like candid's great. as much as there are like the themes and stuff, and a lot of the stuff it touches on are like really huge, profound topics. There are there is the other opposite end of that spectrum where it's like literally just like crap dates and like yeah. hinge and all of that like trivial stuff that's so current and so rubbish a lot of the time. Yeah. Like so it's, it's even I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. But um, it's it's yeah, it's um it's a, a whole spectrum of relatability like and that's like what Reese was saying is like there's something like something everybody can relate to mm. in some way. Or another and it's because it's so current and it's now and it's real people living real experiences because it's like yeah okay it's big and fancy and we do all these amazing huge numbers but at the heart of it all is just real people yeah. um, and what they're talking about is real stuff yeah. that everyone goes through in some way or another yeah, yeah. some more than others <laughs> and there is bits of the show that I like can't wait for my friends to come and see. Like there's bits of the show that I'm like, oh my god, you need this. You need, you need this. Sit down, buy your ticket, sit down and watch. Do you remember that bit that you need that? Like in a in a lovely way. Like I can't wait for my friends to be like, oh no, that's me. Do you know what I mean? Like that that feeling yeah. of feeling seen in both yeah. in all the ways is yeah. amazing. I love it. No, literally it's made me like actually go and speak to people personally in my life and be like, yeah, I actually don't want to talk to you anymore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like the numbers, like, you know, so that's, and that's just with us, with our little company. So yeah. that's only 20 people. And there's been other people that I've spoken to in the class that have done the same, that are like, actually, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all watching on TikTok now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think like, if it can do that in a room of 20 people, like, I cannot wait to the see, and to feel the impact have, yeah. it's going to have on 700, 800 every yeah. single night. It's, so 800 every <laughs> 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 um, and then what have been some of the highs and lows of the rehearsal process? I think the highs is literally coming in every day and being in this company. Like, truthfully, it is, I know we said it before, but like that is a high. Yeah. You, know, you don't get that often and it feels like such a safe space. So, yeah. 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 Another high is, like, is when, <laughs> when we're sort of discovering stuff. And we had <laughs> one of the scenes today, we have a moment where we need something to happen or we need a little funny thing and we'll try 17 different options and we go, is that stupid enough? Is, that, is it silly enough to go in? Great. And if it is, then it goes in. If it doesn't feel silly enough, we go, nah, we can, we can do better. Yeah. We can think of something dumber than that to go in. Because that's, that's just, it's, it's brilliant. It's so much fun to come into work today and like, just play and be silly and it feels like we're being <laughs> like kids. Which yeah. Is, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So much. I, get, I mean, I don't, I actually don't think there are many lows of like, like genuinely I can think the about. I think, I think yeah. the exhaustion, the general yeah. is like the exhaustion and actually what we, what we give, like yeah. you are giving yeah. so much of yourself every day because we want to be here, yeah. because we want to make it the best version of the show that's possible. So we're all here like every day being like, I am like giving 100% of my battery. I go home to my flatmate and I'm like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good day. That's the low. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a great time. 
So I mean, like, it's, that is the actual low, is, is the, the high of giving ourselves so much to the process yeah. and then sort of getting home having no personality. <laughs> but yeah, it's sitting, worth it. Sitting and staring at the wall, like, yeah. <laughs> just so sad. Right. Um, and then, can you describe your ideal first date? Ooh. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, just, don't. Don't. just don't. There's mine. No. Yeah, what it does. I think I like I like I'd like a sort of like day at the beach kind of. Yes. At the oh, beach. Yeah. Yeah. What are you wearing? No, no, no. No, no, no. Like go like right up here and go. Oh, 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 that's what that'd be nice, but King for the first day. No, at the day at the beach, maybe in the arcade, we go and get like fried, deep fried donuts. You know, that's oh, that's that's your that's so no, don't nice. take me on a day. <laughs> that's so nice. That's I am. Um, I actually love going to art galleries. I know that's oh. like just so. Oh. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud. Like, we do, uh, just like, okay. Those are like we're just really abstract, like contemporary no, art. I love it. Love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah. It's a really good conversation. As well. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Those colours. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and just chatting. I just love to chat. Yeah. Just communicating, yeah. communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Cast, cast of yappers. Yeah, just yap, 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 yap. Oh. Yeah, that's mm. right. Well, I think everyone always asks ideal first date or dream first date, and really the dream is to not be going on a first date. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, true. Sure. Yeah, to be in a healthy, yeah, yeah. relationship. Yeah. 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 If it's really done, I just, it's, I don't know, I think just going for a drink or something, or maybe some, or a coffee, maybe not, or just that sort of like meeting Chill. set up. Because it, I don't know, maybe no, an activity at a push, but a drink, I think, for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've also discovered self dating this year, and that's great. Yes. Just like taking yourself on a little date. Do you know what? Yes. Just taking yourself on like I don't know a ten day holiday to Greece. <laughs> <laughs> but just like just I don't know, there is something really that is like my ideal first date. If on your own? Just, yeah, on my own. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think that's a really good yes. thing that is good. And also, I think this part of the show is like enjoying to love your own company. Yeah. Like when you sort your stuff out, so you have time to like be with yourself and be in your own company and that's a really special thing as well so that when you meet someone it's even better yes yes um, <laughs> and then in the show the two sort of lead single friends are musical theatre composers as well if you had to put another musical theatre character in the show which character would it be you know that's such a good one. Yeah. Does this mean from other yeah. music? Yeah. Okay, I actually do have that straight away because we've just thought about yeah. it. I was going to say Olaf from Frozen. <laughs> 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 I think Olaf's version of Eight Dates would be absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Just the person behind Olaf, like, <laughs> oh, 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 Friday night, do you know what I mean? I had an icicle. I don't know, yeah. like, just a, <laughs> I think it'd be fun. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Lovett. Her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it has to be Helena Bonham Carter. You know the film? Yeah, yeah. it has to be her. Yeah. I think she'd fit into Spice the world. Up a bit. I just think she'd fit into the world of the show so perfectly. Like she's yeah. She's actually doing the recast. Is she? <laughs> she's Nancy. She's the, she's the, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think that would be, be great. Maybe I just want Helena Bonham Carter in the show. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's not that soon. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Did you say one? Oh yeah. Our last question is: Can you describe the show using three emojis? Oh. This is kind of what they are. Oh, gee, <laughs> oh, that one with the tongue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you one. You one that's like this. Wait, everyone, demonstrate one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I'm the only one that did it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that like the water in the eyes, you know what it's like? Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's like happy. Yeah, the but it's like. Smile yeah. and then the tears. Like I'm feeling, oh, I feel like. And also, yeah. like, and, then, and then like the cringy face. Yeah. Because it's so. You know, there's some That's funny moments. Yeah. yeah. That way, just, that's me on the poster. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, the, um, the lady in the red dress that's like this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because, because Ellen Kane. You know? yeah. Yeah. We all just feel like this constantly. Yeah. We were just like. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. All, we've really made this like made a this thing. Like everything just becomes a bit this. I really enjoy it. Yeah, the two glasses. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's five. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I'm actually like, 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 like
The cherries, I think, but, is good. Because it's so cheeky. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's sorry. it. Everything's got two lots of three emojis there, so that's perfect. So, <laughs> yeah, two times six. Six. Two person thing of like going to see a show and like every time I go to the theatre like I'm sort of like in the middle of my life and I'm like okay I'm gonna meet this person and I'm gonna go see that show and then I'm gonna like have a drink all of that and I like never really factor in the fact that like that I don't really know how I'm gonna be affected like out of the end of that kind of show and yeah there's just something about like the kind of like yeah the theatre space that's just really magical and so you know this is a big fancy musical and I guess it's kind of in some ways oh God, so aesthetic a love letter to theatre in many ways, <laughs> really. God, so <laughs> it's really a love letter to musical theatre. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it is, it is, and like, and there's a lot of like, you know, as you might have seen in some of those little songs, there's a lot of like references to other things because the two characters are musical theatre writers. Musical theatre is so much like a part of their life, and also talking about the musical that they have to write is also part of the show. And so like, their love of musical theatre and their kind of like, also like their, their anxieties about how it's something that they love, but also something that they ha like they're trying to write as well is like part of the fabric of the show um, and yeah so I think like you know I love the musical theatre it's like it, it like it's so much at the foundation of what the show is kind of about as well as dating <laughs> <laughs> and then what made you want to write the musical and have you enjoyed it? Mm -hmm. I just want to write it I get oh. what I well do you know what I think what made us want to write it was that doing the the one that we Six. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> Six, the musical which we wrote before. Uh, <laughs> you know, watch your team. <laughs> and then, so I think, um, uh, that was so much fun and the most like in incredible experience writing it because because we wrote it when we were students, and so it was like this quite fun, carefree um, uh, experience of writing it because we were like, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's for the Edinburgh Fringe. Like we're, we're mainly got to focus on like you know our studies at the moment and our final year of uni. But let's like do this fun thing on the side. And also because we had like done some theatre stuff before together at uni, but we hadn't like written songs together. And I think when we started doing that, we were like, okay, soulmate. <laughs> 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 because it was like, sorry. Um, uh, but no, it was just like it was just it was so much fun. And this we were like, oh wait, like you like get it and you're so clever and this is so much fun to do. And so I think when Six then took off and was doing all these things, I think we were like, they were, they're, they're also I remember now talking about it, <laughs> sorry, I'll go on, um, is that were, I, I remember this kind of like anxiety started coming in because we had just left uni, Six, you know, was um, picked up by some lovely producers um, and then started like, you know, doing a production and going to, to London and everything. And we were spending a lot of time, you know, doing interviews much like this and people were like, so, so you are both like musical theatre writers, and we're like, yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're musical theatre writers. And we're like, we've written literally eight songs, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, and like, and this kind of like, I guess like an almost like a guilt of like talking about how we're like these writers and la 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 la, but then like having like, we're like, wait, what, what, what else we got a show for it? Yeah. This is one show. It's not even two acts. And so I think we were like, um, and so I think that also for me was something that was like, oh, it's so fun, just like actually like, do some writing and like. And and then um, I think I think it's also like a thing where after six we felt such a pressure to like write something else and we were sort of mm -hmm. like 
oh, that didn't take us very long, so we'll just bash out like five other ones immediately. And then it was like kind of only when we went to this writing retreat, and we were like, okay, we have to write this really like, important show about important things. And like a day in, we were like, just write a silly show that we actually want to write. And like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And that was kind of, so it kind of came up finding, um, finding ourselves back to kind of the space we had for six, which is just like the two of us in the room being like, what would make us laugh? What do we think? What would we like to see? Um, yeah, so yeah. kind of like, I was about the, the second part of that. Yeah. It's just a bit of a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, kind of following on from that, though, is what drew you to writing about the modern dating experience? Well, I guess, like, when. So, so the show kind of came about because at the start of 2019, when we've been, as I said, talking about writing loads but not actually doing anything of it. And then we went on this writing retreat in Connecticut um, to good speed and we, uh, yeah, sat down and as Lucy said, we're like, okay, let's write this idea that you have this really important musical. Then we're like, oh, it's a bit much. How are you, by the way? <laughs> no, we've been hanging out for a year. We haven't had a conversation yet. What's going on? <laughs> um, and then we just like had a big, you know, catch up of like, you know, the gossip basically. Like, oh, you know that guy that you were saying? Like, like what happened? Because the end of the blah, and then, that conversation just went on and on and on and on, and we were like, wait, this was such a fun conversation. <laughs> that should be in this <laughs> <laughs> And so I think, I think maybe somewhat narcissistically, it originally came from um, us really enjoying gossiping about our own dating lives. But then when we started thinking about, okay, so what's the show, and what's it about, and why are we telling the story, it then became more about like, you know, less about specifically the experiences of dating, but more about like, you know, going through your twenties, having these friends around you that support you through all the ups and downs of the um, horrifying landscape of dating. And so it was kind of like that kind of like friendship love that then infused us wanting to talk about dating, I guess. Um, and then what was the development process like for musical? Um, yeah, so when we went on the right retreat, <laughs> It was this thing, actually, what happened was, it was like uh, one of those ones where you can like, you, there are lots of other people in the writing retreat as well, and you go, and at the end of the day, you can like share a song, and we, we spent all day like gossiping, and being like, I think this is going to be the show, it's going to be about this thing, and we went, and we were like, well, we don't have to share, there's no pressure, every single other person obviously had done an amazing song that day, <laughs> we were like, oh god, <laughs> we went back to our little like house, and like wrote, just like, it, like in one sitting actually, the song that is now the final song of the show, and like, um, Unlike with six, which kind of like bashed out, and like the sort of first draft of it is quite similar to how it sort of endures. Like, this is a show that's really like developed so many different ways, and our writing process has changed through it. And so many, but each song has been written in different ways and rewritten, and like the structure has been like really, it's been such a like ridiculous back and forth, like um, you know, like a sort of like wild process. But it's really funny that like, that final song, I think, is like the only one that has like remained exactly the same lyrically and musically, like throughout the whole time because it kind of felt like this outpouring of what we were trying to say. And yeah, and then from there it's been like, we basically like, spent two weeks on it and we had like a beginning song and an end song and then we didn't work on it for six months because we were like off doing six somewhere and then we like had a week and we like wrote another song um, and then had another experience which I can't tell you about but was, is now made it into the show. It was like on another the Friday that this thing happened, <laughs> um, which is the act one finale. Um, and then like, yes, it was kind of like here and there we would like have these little pockets of, of time to write. And then we basically sat down and we were like, we're like, okay, let's bash out like a draft of all the songs. And then we kind of, yeah, had to sort of like write the scenes and restructure the songs. And like, there's some songs we've had to rewrite like upwards of like 30 times, <laughs> which has been quite, yeah, so it's kind of been a, a process of rewriting really well, I think. Yeah, which is, to be fair, still going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this evening. Yeah, and and this. Tomorrow evening, so yeah. <laughs> And were you always set on the title of Why Am I So Single or were there other dropped titles? Briefly, we were working with um, six two. We <laughs> 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 kind of like number thing with confusing, yeah. and um, so yeah, but it, it's always been, yeah, yeah Why Am I So Single. Yeah, the first thing we... Yeah, <laughs> title, finale, and then the rest then is just... Great, <laughs> 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 okay. and then um, how are your nerves holding up with premiering a brand new show? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, like, I, yeah, I feel like ups and downs for me. I mean, because I'm, you know, I'm not the director, like Lucy, and so a, a lot of what I'm doing is kind of like not in the room the whole time. And so a lot of my experiences then coming into the room and watching them do an incredible number and go, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> um, and 
Um, yeah, but just and, and I feel quite you know excited after today because it was really cool to, to show it to people for the first time. But how are your nerves doing? How are my nerves doing? They're okay actually. I don't know if that's if that's a good thing or not. I'm <laughs> deluded. But um, <laughs> no, I do you know what? I just really trust our team. Um, like we're just working with such an amazing group of designers and creatives and actors that I'm actually just really excited for everyone to see it um, and yeah also I guess like working on it it's very like you kind of don't really have space to be like nervous so okay I want to do this next and go there and blah 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 so I can uh, I'm sure tomorrow I'll wake up and be like <laughs> but right now okay <laughs> um, what was the biggest thing you learned from six to come to practice for why am I so single um, oh my gosh this obviously there's so many things um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is I think that Again, kind of how I mentioned how like we thought we, we tried to write loads of other things and then kind of ended up with this one. I think it's like six, as Phoebe says, was just like the two of us in a room being like, haha, that city. Not really thinking about anyone ever really seeing it beyond like ourselves and what would make us laugh. And I think that then sort of seeing that translate, I guess, I don't know, I think if you try and write to be like universal or try and write for a quote unquote audience of the specific people like that aren't yourself, then I, I think. I guess like I reflecting on six, I, mean, I think what was successful about that like tonally is that it felt really like we just wrote it for what we thought would be funny. And so I think with this we really tried to like keep that sort of feeling as we were developing in early stages and sort of getting our first draft out and being like, we're not gonna like try and like, you know, like pitch it before it's ready or whatever, like bring it to the producers before they're they're ready to hear it. We just want to sort of like keep it in a little container and then obviously and then it's kind of bringing everybody in and then from there I guess as well the sort of like the other thing, again, like we said, is like uh, like trusting the team and not feeling alone in it. So it's sort of that early stage of writing for like your own brains, but then like when you sort of bring everybody else in, just being like, do you know what? Everyone is like doing this together, and it's not just like our little thing anymore. It's like I guess like yeah, trusting the amazing team that you have to, to bring it to life and know you're not alone in it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I think I think and on that last one, just like a general kind of like. Thing that we learn a lot in our collaboration and then like you know when you start widening teams like lots of people have been working all the time just like you know especially things can you know it's everyone's creative time things can get a bit like ah and i think just like giving people the benefit of the doubt in lots of situations just makes all collaborations really um just a lot easier and And also s s sleeping <laughs> as well. There was lots of like not sleeping <laughs> during those early early days of sex um, and sleeping helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then obviously we've just had a couple of new songs, but we previously heard songs um, like Eight Dates and Just In Case, um, and they've had a really great response so far. So how has that felt, and what do you think we can all expect from some of the other songs in the show? It's all really cool. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and, I, um, and the cast performs so well. And um, gosh, yeah, I'm just really, I'm so excited for more people to, um, yeah, yeah, hear I, these songs. I'm so excited for people to hear these songs. Yeah. And there's loads of them. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. really a lot, almost more than twice the number of ones and six. But it's also like a sort of thing where like quite a lot of them are quite like spoilery in terms of the actual shows. It's quite that sort of like, to be like, okay, this one and this one and this one, but like, I'm really excited as well about the fact that they're like lots of different genres, mm. um, and like they kind of all have a, like one foot in sort of like poppy world, or most of them do, but like there's really kind of like loads of different textures, and like, um, yeah, it's very eclectic yeah. at the school. And also, the orchestrations are things. so um, so cool, as you heard from uh, those ones there. But two of our amazing orchestrating team are here today, Future yeah. Cup. who is also really not in the room, but he's also incredible. And yeah, and just like, you know, um, what they've been making is just so, so wonderful and cool. And 
I'm just very excited for everyone to hear it. I think it sounds really cool. <laughs> because we wrote it when we were students and so it was like this quite fun, carefree um, uh, experience of writing it because we were like, oh, it's, you know, it's for the Edinburgh Fringe, like we're, we're mainly got to focus on like, you know, our studies at the moment and our final year of uni, but let's like do this fun thing on the side. And also because we had like done some theatre stuff before together at uni, but we hadn't like written songs together. And I think when we started doing that, we were like, okay, soulmate. Because <laughs> it, like, it, it was like, <laughs> um, uh, but no, it was just like, it was just, it was so much fun and this real like, oh, wait, like, you like get it and you're so clever and this is so much fun to do. And so I think when Six then took off and was doing all these things, I think we were like, there were, there, there also I remember now talking about it, <laughs> sorry, I'll go on, um, is that there were, I, I remember this kind of like anxiety started coming in because we had just left uni, Six, you know, was um, picked up by some lovely producers um, and then started like, you know, doing a production and going to, to London and everything and we were spending a lot of time, you know, doing interviews much like this and people were like, so so you are both like musical theatre writers and we're like, yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're musical theatre writers and we're like, we've written literally eight songs. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, and, like, and this kind of like, I guess like an almost like a guilt of like talking about how we're like these writers and la 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 la, but then like having like, but we're like, wait, what, what, what else we got a show for it? Yeah. This is one show? It's only got two acts! And so I think we were like, um, so I think that also for me was something that was like, oh, it's so fun just like actually like, do some writing and like and and then um, I think I think it's also like a thing where after six we felt such a pressure to like write something else and we were sort of like oh that didn't take us very long so we'll just bash out like five other ones immediately <laughs> and then it was like kind of only when we went to this writing retreat and we were like okay well, we have to write this really like, important show about important things and like a day in we were like should we just write a silly show that we actually want to write and we're like yeah yeah let's do that and that was kind of, so it kind of came up finding a Finding ourselves back to kind of the space we had for six, which is just like the two of us in the room being like, what would make us laugh? What do we think? What would we like to see? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah. kind of like. Great. Okay. I'm just saying. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was about the, the second part of that. Yeah. It's just a good part. A roller coaster. <laughs> So, so the show kind of came about because at the start of 2019, when we've been, as I said, talking about writing loads, but not actually doing any of it. And then we went on this writing retreat in Connecticut um, to good speed. And we, uh, yeah, sat down and as Lucy said, we're like, okay, let's write this in the idea that we have this really important musical. And then we're like, oh, it's a bit much. How are you, by the way? <laughs> And we've been hanging out for a year, we haven't had a conversation yet, what's going on? Um, and then we just like had a big, you know, catch up of like, you know, the gossip basically. Like, oh, you know that guy that you were saying? Like, like what happened? Because the end of the and then that conversation just went on and on and on and on. And we were like, wait, this was such a fun conversation. That should be a musical. <laughs> and so I think, I think maybe somewhat narcissistically, it originally came from. Um, us really enjoying gossiping about our own dating lives, but then when we started thinking about okay, so what's the show and what's it about and why are we telling the story, it then became more about like you know less about specifically the experiences of dating, but more about like you know going through your twenties, having these friends around you that support you through all the ups and downs of the. Um, horrifying landscape of dating, and so it was kind of like that kind of like friendship love that then infused us wanting to talk about dating, I guess. Um, and then what was the development process like for musical? Um, yeah, so when we went on this right retreat, um, <laughs> it was this thing actually what happened was it was like uh, one of those ones where you can like, you, there are lots of other people on the right retreat as well, and you go and at the end of the day you can like share a song. And we we spent all day like gossiping and being like, I think this is going to be the show. It's going to be about this thing. We went and we were like, well, we don't have to share. There's no pressure. Every single other person obviously had written an amazing song that day. We were like, oh god. <laughs> and we went back to our little like house and like wrote just like it like in one sitting actually the song that is now the final song of the show. And like um, 
unlike with six, which kind of really bashed out, and like the sort of first draft of it is quite similar to how it sort of endures. Like this is a show that's really like developed in so many different ways, and our writing process has changed through it. And so many, but each song has been written in different ways and rewritten, and like the structure has been like really, it's been such a like ridiculous back and forth, like um, you know, like a sort of like wild process. But it's really funny that that final song. I think it's like the only one that has like remained exactly the same lyrically and musically like throughout the whole time because it kind of felt like it was outpouring what we were trying to say. And yeah, and then from there it's been like, we basically like spent two weeks on it and we had like a beginning song and an end song and then we didn't work on it for six months because we were like off doing six somewhere and then we like had a week and we like wrote another song um, and then had another experience which I can't tell you about what was, is now made it into the show, it was like on another of the Friday this thing happened, <laughs> <laughs> which is the act one finale. Um, and then like, yes, yeah, so it was kind of like here and there, we would like have these little pockets of, of time to write. And then we basically sat down and we were like, we're like, okay, let's bash out like a draft of all the songs. And then we kind of, yeah, had to sort of like write the scenes and restructure the songs. And like, there's some songs we've had to rewrite like upwards of like 30 times, <laughs> which has been wild. Yeah, so it's kind of been a, a process of rewriting it really well. Yeah, which is, to be fair, still going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this evening. Yeah, <laughs> Tomorrow evening, so yeah. And were you always set on the title? Why am I so single? Were there other draft titles? Briefly, we were working with um six two. Kind <laughs> 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 of like number thing with confusing and um, so, but it, it's always been yeah. yeah why am I so single? The first thing that we yeah <laughs> title finale and then the rest. Then is we just, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just <laughs> okay, and then um, how are your nerves holding up with premiering a brand new show? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 yeah, I feel like ups and downs for me. I mean, because I, I'm, you know, I'm not the director, like we've seen, so a lot of what I'm doing is kind of like not in the room the whole time, and so a lot of my experience is then coming into the room and watching them do an incredible number and go, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> um, and yeah, but just, and, and I feel quite you know, excited after today because it was really cool to, to show it to people. The first time, but how are your nerves doing? How am I nerves doing? They're okay, actually. I don't know if that's if that's a good thing or not. If I'm <laughs> deluded, but um, no. I do you know what? I just really trust our team. Um, like we're just working with such an amazing group of designers and creatives and actors that I'm actually just really excited for everyone to see it. Um, and yeah, also I guess like working on it, it's very like you kind of don't really have space to be like. So okay, I've got to do this next and go there and blah blah blah. So I can, I don't know, I'm sure tomorrow I'll wake up and be like, but right now, okay. <laughs> um, what was the biggest thing you learned from six that you've to practice for? Why am I so single? Um, oh my gosh, there's, almost, there's so many things. Um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is, I think that, again, kind of how I mentioned how like, we thought we'd, we'd try to write loads of other things and then kind of ended up with this one. I think it's like, Six, as Phoebe says, was just like the two of us in a room being like, haha, that's silly. Not really thinking about anyone ever really seeing it beyond like ourselves and what would make us laugh. And I think that then sort of seeing that translate, I guess, I don't know, I think if you try and write to be like universal or try and write for a quote unquote audience of specific people like that aren't yourself, then I, I think, I guess like I reflecting on six, I, mean, I think what was successful about that like tonally is that it felt really like we just wrote it for what we thought would be funny. And so I think with this we really tried to like keep that sort of feeling as we were developing in early stages and sort of getting our first draft out and being like, we're not gonna like try and like, you know, like pitch it before it's ready or whatever, or, like bring it to the producers before they're then ready to hear it. We just want to sort of like keep it in a little container and then obviously and then it's sort of bring everybody in and then from there I guess as well the sort of like the other thing, again, like we said, is like about like trusting the team and not feeling alone in it. So it's sort of that early stage of writing for like your own brains, but then like when you sort of bring everybody else in and just being like, do you know what, everyone is like doing this together and it's not just like our little thing anymore. It's like, I guess like yeah, trusting the amazing team that you have to, to bring it to life and know you're not alone in it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, um, and on that last one, just like a general kind of like, Thing that we learned a lot in our collaboration, and then like you know when you start widening the team to like lots of people who working all the time, just like you know especially things can you know it's everyone's creative type things can get like ah. and I think just like giving people the benefit of the doubt in lots of situations just makes all collaborations really um, just a lot easier and 
um, in Mesa. And also s s sleeping <laughs> as well. There was lots of like not sleeping <laughs> during those early, early days of sex um, and sleeping helps. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then obviously we've just had a couple of new songs, but we've previously heard songs um, like Eight Dates and Just In Case, um, and they've had a really great response so far. So how has that felt, and what do you think we can expect from some of the other songs in the show? It's really cool. I mean, I, I, I'm really bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I've um, and the cast performed so well, and um, gosh, yeah, I'm just really, I'm so excited for more people to. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited people to hear these songs. Yeah. And there's loads of them. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. really a lot. Almost more than twice the number yeah. one and six. But it's also like a sort of thing where like quite a lot of them are quite like spoilery in terms of the actual shows. It's quite like, sort of like hard not to be like, okay, this one and this one and this one. But like I'm really excited as well about the fact that they're like lots of different genres. Mm. Um, and like they kind of all have a, like one foot in the sort of like poppy world, or most of them do, but like there's really kind of like loads of different textures and like um, yeah, it's very classic yeah. at the school. And also the orchestrations oh, are so, yeah. so cool, as you heard from um, those ones there. But two of our amazing orchestration team are here today. Future Cup, Darren and Tom Day. Half of our team, also um, with uh, Joe Baton, who is also maybe not in the room, but he's also incredible. And yeah, and just like you know, um, what they've been making is just so so wonderful and cool. And I'm just so excited for everyone to hear it. I think it sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all of our questions. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to all at uh, Why Am I So Single for inviting us to that event. I don't know if I'm too old for a musical like this. Why do you think you're too old? Keep in mind, Hannah hasn't heard any of the stuff yet because we are going to the opening night, so I kind of want to. I don't want to reveal too much, but it's just all a bit kind of not modern for me. But it's I'm happy in a relationship. I'm not looking for any. I, I'm not okay. Fine, scrap that. But f before you met me, then. Mm would you feel that you've related to it it's always hard to say how do you relate to a piece when you've only seen two and a half yeah songs i get from that it. but it's more the music styles are a bit too modern for me i enjoy six um but i still think i'd like to see because it's kind of a book musical, but it isn't a book musical. Does it compare musically and like the music style to Six? Yeah, then? I think. Okay, which is great. You I've know, only heard like two songs from they, Six. They know what they're doing. Six is is wonderful. I still need to see it. Um, but it's just a bit too kind of shouty for my liking, and okay. I wish. Do you? Sorry to interrupt, but, but do you part, part of me wishes they would just write a book musical mm. this is very referential to musicals it's about two people writing a, a, a kind of um two people who live together a gay couple and a straight girl will and grace territory wanting to write a musical title of show and discussing their relationships sex in the city slash i love you you're perfect now change i just think we've seen this before but it'd be okay. interesting to see how a british version is tackled they're very funny, the writing couple. They know what them, Toby and Lucy, they know what they're doing. They're excellent. So I know the concept is in safe hands. Mm. So I don't want to say too much about the show because it's not fair to judge it yet. Do you think, from what you've seen so far and from what you've said about it, obviously me knowing very, very little, but just taking the title as well, do you think this is going to draw the same sort of Heathers and Six crowd? Do you know what I mean by that? I that think sort of it's relying on the success of Six. Okay. Because it's from the writers and producers and, you know, Lucy directed Six as well and she's directed this. So I think it's going for the same um vein. But as I said in the in the Q and A we had, they wanted to you know, Six has eight songs in it and it's an it's a seventy minute piece. Mm. They pushed themselves to do twenty songs and like a proper full-on musical um they said themselves they kind of 
they've never done this before because six was never written to be a big show it's just something they wrote at university and it found success so this is really their first time writing a proper musical with the aim of putting on a proper musical yeah so i think the pressure on them is huge oh it's got to be because considering that six found i don't mean accidental success but you know mm, well, won tony awards yeah but turning out to be what it was from what it started is is incredible and and i think it's always dangerous when you try and replicate something for the second time but then they're not replicating it it's not like they've gone oh, okay here's six two no well that's that they they jokingly said that's what they wanted to call it <laughs> <laughs> i hope they were joking um but we'll discuss it more once once we've seen once it. we've seen it um i have a feeling you'll enjoy it more than i will but it remains to be seen and heard thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of musical talk thank you for everyone at why am i so single for inviting us along until next time take care hannah you're going to be seeing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang soon, aren't you? I am. Uh, what are we today? What day are we? Monday. I'm yeah. seeing it on Saturday. Yeah, so next week, you'll hear Hannah's thoughts on that. Until then, fly away <laughs> to Hushabye Mountain. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Musical Talk. To find out more about the world of Musical Talk, you can visit our website at musicaltalk.co.uk where you'll find all our episodes, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Musical Talk.